Hi and welcome back to That Office Guy. My name is Nick and in today's video we're going to talk all about the aggregate function. Now the aggregate function can be a little bit complex and a little bit difficult to understand at first, but it's a pretty powerful function for very specific functions within Microsoft Excel. As we get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. If you're new, make sure you hit subscribe and you will never miss another update. You'll stay well up to date with all the latest functions and formulas for Microsoft Excel. Right, before we jump into what's going on and how to actually use this particular function, I think it's important that we first talk about what this function is. Um, the aggregate function basically returns an aggregate in a list or database. The aggregate function can apply different aggregate functions to a list or database with the option to ignore hidden rows and error values. There is also worth noting the function will not ignore hidden rows, nested subtotals or nested aggregates if the array argument includes a calculation. And the aggregate function is designed for columns of data or vertical ranges. It is not designed for rows of data or horizontal ranges. Right, with that out of the way, let's jump down to the desktop and really talk about how to use this function and why it's so powerful. Okay, guys, so here on the desktop, what we're going to do is we're going to talk you through what is going on. So I've got some sample data and I've got some references as well. Um, and on here, what we're going to do is we're going to break down the different kinds of aggregate functions that you can use and uh, why you might want to use them. So over here on the furthest left hand side, we've got two columns of data. Okay, we've basically got a series of numbers. Um, on the column A, we have obviously um, a couple of errors in here, right? We've got a non-divisible by zero, and we've got a num error. Um, but in column B, there are no errors, right? So we've got two different columns of data. We're going to use both of these um, in different circumstances so we can see exactly what's going on, right? So the first thing we want to do is actually take a look at the first version of an aggregate function, okay? So obviously, we'd open up with equals aggregate, um, open up a bracket, and then we get a series of pieces of information. And this particular formula here, calculates the maximum value while ignoring errors um, or error values within the range. Now, inside this, there is the um, references that are being used as well as the options. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to come over to the references tab for a second. And um, so basically, there's the function number and then the function that you get to use within your aggregate. So for example, many of you probably will be familiar with uh, things like average or count or max, min, um, sum, for example, large, small, and there's a whole host of different um, functions that you can use with inside your aggregate formula. And so obviously when we're looking at these formulas, this is the reference table to use so you understand exactly what re uh, what function you want to be calling with inside your aggregate. Over this side here is your options, okay? And the options have different behaviors. It might be that you want to ignore nested subtitles or aggregate functions, or ignore hidden rows and nested subtitles, for example, into all the way through to ignoring absolutely nothing or just the hidden rows or error values. So the options give you a little bit more flexibility when it comes to the aggregate function. So it's well worth understanding what each number represents and what they mean. Okay, so we're going to hop between the two so we can break down each formula so we understand how these things are working. So this particular formula at the top here, this first one we have in E2, this aggregate open up bracket 4, 6, A1 to A11. So let's break this down in a little bit more detail. What we're trying to do here is use the 4, if I actually come into our aggregate, aggregate for a second, let me just... Um, let me just come over to this form formula here. We'll open up the formula, okay? We'll just open this up. So we can see that the function number is four. Um, you can't see that. Okay, so what we're going to do is just break this formula down. We've got aggregate four, six, A1 to A11. Now the four represents the function number, okay? So if we come over to the references and we shoot down our function numbers here, find number four, it's a maximum, okay? So we know that this particular aggregate is looking for the maximum number and we're using option six, okay? So we come over to our references, we go down to option six, which is to ignore error values. 
Okay, so if we come back to our aggregate function, we know that we're max, we're using looking for the maximum value and we're going to ignore all the errors and the range that we're going to use is A1 to A11. Okay, so we get to shoot down here and basically find the largest number and ignore any errors. This obviously gives us a result of 96, which is the largest value in that array. So a pretty useful formula here to allow you to basically find the maximum number whilst ignoring any potential errors. But again, with the aggregate function, you can switch and change without having to rewrite the entire formula. All you need to do is, of course, just change the function number and the option number as well. So let's take a look at the second option here, because the second version of this aggregate formula is actually something else that uses parameter k as well. So aggregate, we're looking for function 14. We're looking for option 6, the same range as before, so a1 to a11. But then we've got an additional um, option at the end here, which is parameter k. Um, and basically, this allows us to basically choose the third largest in this case. Okay, So if we wanted to, this, this to be the, the second largest, the third largest, um, or whatever, we, we could basically change this n number to represent what we're looking for. So what we're going to do here is actually just come on over into our references. So we are using 14 as in our, uh, our function number. This is the largest number that it's looking for, okay? And then, of course, we're going down into our option six, which is to ignore all errors. So unlike using just the large function and trying to find the third largest number, if there are errors, it's going to cause a problem. So we know that we have a non-divisible by zero and a number error um, in column A, that actually using the aggregate function to allow us to find the larger or the third largest with ignoring all errors allows us to basically you know, bypass some of those issues. So a pretty useful function. Now, obviously, parameter k has some useful perks to it. So it's worth understanding how that works. Um, and in the case of using the large function, we're finding the third largest value. OK, so let's talk about this particular formula. So aggregate, again, same starting position. And um, this time we're using the function number of 15 with the option of 6. And again, a1 to a11. But what is our function 15? We shoot down the list here and we say we're looking for the smallest value. So the smallest value within this particular array of a through down here all the way to a11. Okay, but we haven't given it an option here um, for finding that because the aggregate is expecting a second reference argument since it is a small function, we haven't provided it, right? So unlike what we did over here for the largest, we would have to basically say we want the first largest number, the second largest, the third largest. We'd have the same issue here with this one where we're looking for the smallest number, but we haven't really given it an option or um, a parameter K hasn't got a parameter to work towards. Is it the first smallest? smallest number, the second smallest number. So because of this, we actually come and return an error. So hashtag value. So ultimately, what we need to do is adjust this formula to say we want the smallest number, we would basically edit the formula with a comma and a one, and we'd end up with that function working perfectly well. So again, it's worth understanding that if you're going to use those particular functions, you must use parameter k. Now let's talk about this one, this particular aggregate, it uses function 12 with an options of six. We're using two ranges this time though. We're using the A1 to A11 and then B1 to B11. This calculates the medium while ignoring error values in the range. But how does it work? Well, let's jump down over to our references and take a look at what we're looking for. Well, we're looking at option tw uh, function 12, which is the median. And again, we are looking to ignore all errors. So when we have a look at this and we break this down, we can obviously go into that function if we want to, uh, to make sure that um, our aggregate is working as expected. And what we can do is we can basically take a look at this and see how it returns. It's looking at both the array, but also parameter k is a secondary range. So then you're getting the median across the two. A pretty interesting way to use the function, not something that would be very common in the space, but has a really unique use case in Excel. So again, this might be something that you're looking to do. And again, by adding those two ranges together like this, you're really able to basically find an average or a median um, across those ranges, which is really useful. Now let's take a look at this last function just at the bottom here. So basically the max um, value between A1 and A2, um, it will return an error value since there 
are error values in the evaluation range, as in up here in A1, we know that there is an error. And likewise, we know in A2, we actually have a number, but it's unable to actually return a value. So an aggregate on the max range would actually be much more useful way of actually going ahead and doing this particular function. So hopefully guys, this is a useful way for you to understand why you might want to start using aggregates. They are a very meaningful and powerful function inside Excel that allows you to bypass a lot of the errors that are commonly left behind, specifically if you are not using some of the more new 365 formulas that allow you to remove errors directly inside them, or wrapping a formula with an if error or in if NA, for example. Ultimately, if you're not handling your error messages inside Excel, then potentially an aggregate function is going to be your best friend. It will allow you to bypass all those errors and get to the information that you want much faster. Guys, if you have found this video useful and informative, then do go ahead and hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. If you're new, make sure that you have subscribed and you will stay up to date with all the latest hints and tips that we have here for Microsoft Office. With this said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one.